record record on this computer. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there we go. Record. There go. Okay. Good. Also record down below. Okay. Um, All right, there we go for the agenda. Um, open with prayer, a Bible study, minutes, treasures report. Old business is talking about our reopening plan and we might want to set a date. And um, stewardship banquet has been rescheduled. Um, new business is uh, Loretta wants to talk about the building use policy and I've got some stuff on long-term planning. Anybody have any other agenda items they want to add? Okay. I don't have any agenda items to add, Bill, but I would like to say something to the new members of the BC, and that is I'm very, very impressed with you folks. You've hit the ground running, and I'm just amazed. You're, you're doing a crackerjack job. Thank you very much. Good, good. Thanks, Benny. Thank you. All right. Well, let I'd like to ask a question when we get down to the you know the time for other business. I have a I'd like to poll the group. So uh, as part of uh, as part of Julie and my, uh, my efforts on faith formation. Okay, okay. So we'll add that in. Um, that's on new business, I guess. Okay. Um, Okay, so let me. Bring up the prayer and. Um, oh, I don't know who would like to pray this prayer. Anybody, any volunteers? I'll do it. Esther. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I lost it. Where'd it go? Here it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's pray. Almighty and ever living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we take counsel at St. Anthony's for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, here's the Bible study, and uh, it's from Acts chapter 2. On Sunday, we're reading Acts chapter 4, so we get a lot of uh, readings from the Acts of the Apostles in Easter season. So this is about the, the very first Christian community that sprang up after Pentecost. And um, they're describing what the disciples were like. Uh, after the Holy Spirit had come, and they had uh, been filled with the Spirit. So maybe someone could read this. Julie, you want to read it? The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much of their time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So it's a description of the early community. What do you think it would feel like to be part of such a community? Well, there are a few of them that are actually in practice around various places. And there was one that uh, was started out in Eastern um, Eastern King County that was an intentional community. Um, and uh, so it, it, there are people who do that. Um, for most people, you have to have a job and go to work, and it's a little difficult to sort of give everything up and go join a little group. But 
Um, they certainly, it sounds really good. <laughs> what would be good about it? I think the fellowship, the encouragement, the support. What do you think, uh, what was, uh, you use that word fellowship. What do you think that would be like in this group? Somebody else can take a tackle on that one, if you like. Peter, what do you think? About maybe it's because I'm a, maybe it's because I'm one of five children, but um, I think it would take some serious intervention with the Holy Spirit to make fellowship smooth. I think fellowship is rocky at times. Um, siblings, I had a lot of them and, you know, we kind of tripped over each other and we had our squabbles and um, doing the common good is really difficult when you're that close to everybody. So, I don't know, maybe fellowship, if you go in the real sense is just getting through the struggles of living that close to people and coming out still loving them. Yeah, yeah. This is also the original or original origin of what we call today communism. And that in community, these people were together, sharing with each other, um, making sure everybody was taken care of. And we didn't need a government to do it. They did it for themselves. And um, in small groups, it can be done, of course. Yeah. Um, it said they had, uh, they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. What do you think glad and generous hearts means? Sharing food with one another, the people that some people will cook the meal and, uh, they'll switch off and on and they all just are there and love and, um, they just believe everybody has the a heart of gold. <laughs> yeah, it sounds very loving, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think there'd also be a sense that there was enough. So like other people weren't getting more than them. So there wasn't a focus on who has what, but they would, they would be grateful for what they had. And the generous hearts would be just wanting to be gratitude for whatever came their way and a, a true genuine desire to kind of share it to others. So it sounds like it'd be there'd be a sense of freedom and peacefulness, even if even amidst the chaos of a bunch of people living together, there'd be a sense of peace in knowing that there was a, a unified purpose together. Well, and in fact, it doesn't sound as though they lived together. It says they spent much time together in the temple, but they broke bread at home. <laughs> right. So so maybe it's closer to one of those tiny town villages that they're that are popping up everywhere where everyone has their own little adobe yeah but they have commune um common areas for get-togethers outdoor pavilions things like that um and those are popping up to where instead of needing to have that big house yourself you have your main area of living but then all those extra things the big bathrooms and stuff like that those are you know, buildings that are shared by everybody in the town or the little village. Yeah, those are becoming more popular, kind of a co-op living arrangement. Well, particularly as uh, we get older, you know, there's, um, we have some friends who are going into uh, a uh, facility um, down in the South Key County that uh, has, you know, shared common areas and graduated care. Um, which sort of beats the heck out of nursing homes, so. Yeah, yeah. Something where you can uh, have some privacy, but also some uh, community and a um, little beach. Well, in this uh, description of the community, it sounds like the trust was very high. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. It would have to be. Yeah. It would have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. To have that kind of uh, goodwill, that kind of uh, sharing um, and the awe that came upon everyone because of the wonders and signs being done must have been a really wonderful feeling of the Holy Spirit. 
there wasn't a fear that you've made too many mistakes and we keep supporting you, but you don't do anything for us. Right. That kind of thing can enter into a, an arrangement like this. And that's why day by day, Lord is adding to their number and that they are praising God and having goodwill, regardless of whether or not somebody is receiving more than somebody else. It did not matter. Yeah, because they had a high, high level of trust. Everyone trusted each other not to take too much. And hopefully a high level of forgiveness when it was necessary. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it would be. You know, I don't think this community necessarily lasted very long. I think it was highly idealistic and highly directed by the Holy Spirit. And um, I think it was like a high point of the church that didn't last uh, forever. But you know how things are in the beginning when you just have such a, um, a wonderful spirit of something new. And they were, they were just, the risen Lord had just manifested himself to them. And the apostles were doing miracles and healings. And, and they were sharing. And just what a wonderful, amazing feeling it must have been. Well, my second question is, um, you know, when you read a scripture and it repeats something, it makes you think that must be important. And I noticed when I read this that it says day by day twice. About in the middle there, it says day by day as they spent much time together. And then the last sentence says day by day, the Lord added to their number. So why do you think they repeat the phrase day by day? What happened? It, I'm, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it says that they're showing. Okay, here's what they did. Here's what happened. I think it's also the fact that you know this day is the only day we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't do tomorrow. We can't do yesterday. This is it, folks. Yeah. This day. This is what we have. This day. Yeah, it's focused on the immediate rather than worrying about what's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were living in the present, I guess. And it also, they developed a routine where they didn't really have to think about it so much. So it was just something that they did every day. So it became a habitual routine that was, um, that was very grounding and, and just uh, joyful for them. So the yeah. argument for the liturgy and for the practice of uh, the prayer and so on that that we have in the, in the prayer book where you can do something every day yeah a, a daily ritual is important in the spiritual life trying to have a routine that um that grounds you i think that's what loretta you we were talking about yeah could it also to some extent be part of the fact that you have to take things day by day i mean i think of Families going through hard time and all you can do is take things one day at a time and okay so maybe you have you know just one person join today 10 people tomorrow and but maybe you had to put the same amount of effort to get the one that you did the 10 but it's still just you take it one day at a time sure. and they just keep putting that foot forward yeah one day at a time when i um read this i thought about the the hymn hymn 654 it's up on there now oh yeah day by day dear lord of thee three things i pray to see thee more clearly love thee more dearly follow thee more nearly day by day <laughs> And that's one of the songs in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. And I think that's that's a musical that Fifth Avenue is planning to put on in Seattle. So when they mm -hmm. open again, and I thought that'd be a great uh, field trip for the church to go to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't that be fun? That. That'd be really fun. Yeah. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love the music from that musical. It, it was it was wonderful. Yes. And it was. My teen years, Chelsea. So, so like your your years. <laughs> well, I have a confession. No I've never actually seen it. 
So I have a confession I've never actually seen. Well, it. it'll come and you'll like it. Yeah, so that'd be a, that would be a parish life activity, Chelsea. A parish life. Yes, yes, for oh. sure. Fifth Avenue, let's go to see J Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, how is this um, description a model for the church today? Or is it? <laughs> I think in the sense of um, kind of taking, especially in our church, uh, it's just taking everybody who comes to our door and just kind of like, well, you know, what, like, what can we do with these people, you know, and just adding them into our church. And um, we don't like, we are a rich church, <laughs> but uh, we definitely can share and um, with love and give people. I in our church, I know anybody would give the clothes off their back to someone. So I think it's really just accepting everybody um, and respect and trust within the church. Yeah, I think that trust level is a, a thing. You know, in a church community, there ought to be a high level of trust. That's what you want to accomplish, just like this community here. We did seem to have a togetherness and had things in common when we would, I don't know if we sold possessions, but we certainly did give them up and we distributed the proceeds to us in the church and we built a new building. Yeah. And that commonality that we had we did day by day as we spent much time together getting things ready during the three and a half years of construction and the transition over. And um, all this time in the last year of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we have been together. That's right. Yeah. Yep. yep. That building the church is a good example of uh, what they did here. They shared their goods and we shared our goods too. People devoted uh, considerable income to building the church. It was a, a joint effort where um, you know people were very uh, generous and we had glad and generous hearts. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think post COVID, once we're able to meet in person, I think as, as far as this being a model for the church, I think it's gonna be really important to plan as many face-to-face real-time contacts with one another so whether it's, it's parish life or kind of bible study or just a, a major fundraiser so just creating opportunities for people physically to be present with one another because uh, that's that's certainly been missing for all of us so um i think the the regular our, our zoom just all the things you've done bill um has been great um, but it, it, it'd be nice once we can meet in person to, again, to have that face-to-face -face contact. Face-to-face, -face, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, well, good. Thank you very much. This is, that was fun. Um, Jim, it's a treasures report time. Are you there, Jim? Everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Are you in an ocean? Forward. Yeah, currently, yeah. I was exploring fun backgrounds. For some <laughs> reason, it Zoom updated, and the one that I had with the Aurora behind me disappeared between last time and this time. <laughs> so. Jim, was that a pun? When Bill asked if you were in an ocean and you said, currently? Currently. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I left it alone. I did not. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, we're still in the same, uh, you know, spending faster than we're taking it in. I, that goes, I had the same sentiment in my report. I think in person um, is going to help with that. Uh, it helps build the excitement and it's easier to acquire new parishioners. Um, and we kind of got uh, gobsmacked with the uh, um, $1,100 stormwater remediation annual fee from the county, which just 
yeah they they put it in their coffers and don't do anything with it <laughs> pretty much but uh came out of our budget um but we still have money in the checking account and the uh diocesan investment funds are going up and and that it's pretty straightforward okay uh, it looks like our giving was about about in the middle maybe a little low from compared to some months less than yeah. last month february and march were less than last year's february march and april was supposed to be is supposed to be big because that's when easter was both months so we just had easter it was okay i i don't know that we'll do as well as this um but um did get an email um from the bishop, I, I got it directly too. Uh, by the way, Bill, oh, okay. you, you forwarded to me that uh, um, the diocese is going to give us credit uh, for having purchased the equipment for doing online um, oh. church going. So that that'll be a nice. I, I presume we get to deduct that from our uh, um, assessment. assessments going forward. So yeah. that'll be that'll be nice. So that, that'll take a, a little bit of the hurt off, um, because we're we're not going to get the payroll protection that we got last year. So and that it, looking good. Okay. Any questions for Jim? I'm going to have a motion to accept the treasurer's report. I move to accept it. Esther moves. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'll second, okay. I'll second it. All right. Um, let's see. Let me get rid of this so we can see everybody here. Okay. All in favor of accepting the treasurer's report, raise your hand, physical hand or the other hand. Okay. Motion passes. I also forgot to um, ask for a motion to accept the minutes of last BC meeting in March. Uh, did anybody have any corrections? I didn't see any changes. Looked good, D. So all in favor of accepting the uh, minutes from last month, raise your hand. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, let's see here. Um, next item on the... Oh, reopening date. Um, let's see here. Um, might think about a, a, when we want to reopen. I just brought up this chart today from the um, uh, Kitsap County Health Department. And um, as you can see down here in the lower right, <laughs> the numbers are going up. And I suppose that's because, you know, businesses are opening up, churches are opening up, people are getting exposed to each other and there's more cases in Kitsap County. So that's really not very uh, encouraging as far as when we wanna open up. I had suggested May 9th, um, you know, after the two weeks that we're off, uh, what, do you, what do you think of May 9th as a target date? Sounds good to me, I don't know. It's as good as any other date. Yeah. What is the two weeks that we're off? Uh, April 25th, we are going to um, oh, right. participate in the one service that the, the bishops, the, that the diocese puts on. And then May 2nd, we're going to have a joint virtual service with New Fellowship Church. That's right. Okay. I forgot. Yeah. So should we plan on May 9th? Uh, we can always change, of course. Right. Bill, and does Bishop Rickle, is, what's he advising all the churches to do? Just like what you've been doing is kind of monitoring locally what the, the rates are and then making an individual decision. What, what is he saying? Yeah, he says we have to abide by the governor's guidelines. And the governor's guidelines, you know, now are 50% um, capacity and... Um, we can do that. This unforgettable vacation. Know, some churches are um, some churches are opening up some Episcopal churches at uh, a small capacity. Um, 
So, you know, it's, it's starting to happen. You know, a lot of our people are getting vaccinated. Um, I think we've got a probably right. a high level of vaccination in our members. Yeah. Okay. So the question that Jesse just pinged in my ear is how are we going to make sure we stay at the appropriate capacity? Well, 50% of our um, capacity is 122 people. And I don't think we'll have any problem wow. staying under that. Mm -hmm. um, and I the chairs have been spaced out to accept um, about 70 some, about 74, 75 people mm -hmm. with the spacing of the chairs. So it seems well, that to, to me, we could probably, probably do fine. Yeah, it seems prudent to go ahead and, and open just kind of following the guidelines that have already been put in place. Um, and I, I think kind of the, the biggest protective element is probably a good percentage of the congregation are vaccinated at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that minimizes risks all around. Yeah. And, you know, personally, that's the one thing that is making me feel more better, making me feel better about reopening is that uh, I know that most of our people are vaccinated, so I don't fear that um, we're going to kill somebody on Sunday morning. <laughs> sure. And we will take all the precautions. And those people who have, yeah, and uh, folks who are particularly anxious about it will probably continue as they have been the past year. So doing doing a Zoom meeting, so right. service. Yeah. yeah. I don't I think everyone's going to come back the first Sunday. Oh, I don't think so. Well, okay, let's. Uh, well, if, if the six thirty service on Easter was any indication, there is a level of let's get back to the building. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the number of people who showed up in the dark in the rain—it was quite surprising. <laughs> And the, the level yeah. of enthusiasm was just wonderful. Um, I mean, people were just so happy to be there, even yeah. with the cold and the rain and the masks and everything. It was just a wonderful, joyous feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. My drugs are kicking in. I'm going to have to <laughs> sign off and go rest. rest. Okay, okay, that's why you well, leaving us the, the oxycodone dark. does me in. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to Take see you. Care, yeah. Bill. It's good to see you, Bill. Yep. Bye. Right. Okay. See well, time. let's um, let's tentatively plan on that, and we'll keep an eye on the uh, numbers from Kitsap County, and we can adjust if we need to. And Bill, you have ushers that have volunteered. Uh, I think four of us on the BC. And yeah. We have a couple, as you said. So uh, at some point, we should meet and go over the protocols for having people come in and do some training. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to have a ushers meeting so that everybody's on the same page and we know exactly how we're bringing people in and bringing them out. Yeah. So we'll set up a meeting before May 9th. Okay. That is Mother's Day. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's a good day. As I said in my report, it's nice of us to be coming back to the Mother Church. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Oh, Bill. Yeah. Are we gonna? Are we gonna say? Uh, are we gonna ask congregation wants to come, or just be a free for all? Who shows up, or? I think that we can accommodate everybody who wants to come. I don't think we have to have a reservation system. Okay. Uh, I know that's a big question. And uh, some churches have, especially at the 25% capacity, they had a reservation system, but you know, it's, it's a big headache and a lot of administrative work. And uh, then you've got to figure if somebody shows up at the door, do you turn them away or what? You know, it's, it's just easier if you can just say, anyone who wants to come. <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. Okay, I, I just wanted to say one thing on here about the stewardship banquet. You know, I asked uh, Bishop Rickle if he would come and speak 
at our stewardship banquet. And he said, yes, after a long series of negotiations, we settled on October 27th. And then he emailed me the other day and said, well, that, <laughs> that one's been kicked out. So can we reschedule again? So I said, yes. And how about the 21st? And he said, that's fine. So now it's the 21st, it's a Thursday. Okay. So adjust your calendars accordingly. It's, we got plenty of time to plan. <laughs> Sound okay? Okay, um, building use policy. Loretta, did you wanna share some things? Um, sure, so at the, at the last meeting, I brought up that outreach had received requests from Carol Now uh, to use church for two different groups that she's a member of. One was the Linus Project, so they make blankets for children. Um, and then also requesting uh, that her local quilting group be able to meet at the church once a month. So both of these groups would meet once a month. Uh, the quilting group, um, so she sent a, a, re a request and it, they have donated uh, quilts to uh, charitable um, um, causes a number of times. Um, and then, uh, Father Bill, you, you said that there was a facility use plan that had been developed um, um, in 2019. Um, so you sent that out to the whole BC. So I, I took a look at that. So in reviewing that re facility use plan, and I, I talked to a number of people about facility use, um, there are parts of the written plan that was adopted in 2019 that are kind of unclear. Um, the, the biggest, uh, uh, uncertainty is who's in charge, who, who is the building coordinator. It was not identified exactly who that was. For weddings, there was a, a wedding of, like event coordinator, but beyond that, it wasn't identified who, who assumes um, responsibility for that role. Um, part of the plan uh, indicated that non-church non, non members could use the church for meetings, but it wasn't identified whether it could be for a one-time use or long-term. Um, a, it, the plan talks about a long-term rental agreement could be established with uh, nonprofit, five, 501c3 nonprofit agencies, 12-step groups, or other churches, but did not identify whether other groups who were not um, the 501c3 groups, whether they could have a long-term rental agreement. And then there was in the plan, there was a chart for fees to charge for the facility use. Um, and, and the plan also stated that fees for long-term agreements would be considered on a case by case basis, but it didn't decide who was going to be making that decision on a case by case basis. So what I would propose or recommend is that the, so Peter, either the current bishops warden and or interested BC members um, work on just revising the current facility use plan to address those concerns. Because I think the overall plan, it was really well thought out and very detailed. I think uh, it, it, it was really well done, but the things that I just mentioned were things that weren't clear. Um, so I, I think there needs to be a revision. So it could be either you, Peter, or and or, Anyone who's done policy and or uh, Loretta, it could be me, but yeah. I don't think out. I, I don't. I think out. So I, I propose outreach not be the person who decides who who uses. No, the, I'm. I'm. You were oh, talking as, about you were talking as about a generic religion. BC member. Yes, I I, I could. Um, so I'd also propose that the church secretary Linda receives all the requests for facility use. Um, and I don't know if right now there is a form when, when, a, when an agent, if an organization wants to use the, the church, if there's a form to fill out. And if not, then I, I recommend that maybe Linda develop a, just a basic form, just a facility use request. And that then I would propose whatever input kind of facility use request is received um, and they fill out that form that the BC decides. Um, so we review all requests for facility use and decide to accept or deny it and then determine, are we going to charge this group or not? Um, 
and specifically with the two requests that I got from Carol now, as far as the project Linus, um, I, I propose that we we accept the her, the request that Project Linus use the church for monthly meetings. Um, in terms of do we charge or not, the plan does identify charges, uh, but it also says the building, uh, like the facility. Uh, the coordinator decides on fees. I, I don't know if we should charge them or not. Um, since we're hard up, since we're, we're in the red, it probably it might be useful to uh, charge this nonprofit group um, for, for use of the facility. So um, I got some input because this was brought up at our outreach meeting yesterday and Maggie Scott just, just shared some information as far as Oh, uh, so she she participates in an organization that, that rents a room at Silverdale Lutheran Church for their meetings, and they pay $25 for each meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, she also just mentioned that a long time ago, AA had, Alcoholics Anonymous had used the modular at St. A's, as did the Boy Scout troop led by Charles Smith, and she wasn't sure if it char that, that those groups were charged or not. The AA group should have been charged. So, pardon? I said the AA group should have been charged. It's their tradition that they will pay. Okay. All right. Use facility. Yeah. Um. So, and then I also just would defer to the BC as far as accepting the request for the quilting group to use the church. Um. I mean, at this point, I'm okay with it because we just we haven't actually. Use of the church is, isn't going to happen until we start the, the church doors open, which is going to be next month. Um, I just anticipate we'll get more requests for using the church. So I think it's just really important that we tie down all the specifics about how we're going to go about reviewing and accepting or denying and then charging. Um, so that needs to be further sussed out. But as far as Project Linus, I, I think I think that's a, it's a credible organization, five hundred one c three, and I think it's be good use of our space, and um, we could charge them. Um, I'm okay either charging them or not, but just given the fact we are in the red, it's it kind of makes sense to maybe charge them at least a little. Maybe it could be by donation that they well, pass we that. We do accept donations. Yeah, well, I mean, and so either it could be a flat fee or it could be, yeah, pass the hat, whoever's there, they donate, and then we get, it's a variable amount. Loretta, uh, uh, Carol, member of both these groups? Yes. Yeah. Carol, me, Carol's a member of both the quilting group and the project Linus. Yeah, to me, that makes a, a difference because uh, it's not completely an outside group, it's partly uh, a ministry of our church uh, because Carol's part of it. Um, right. And, um, you know, I, I think you're right about, we need to charge a little bit for groups, but uh, we don't want to think of it as strictly a cash cow because uh, the greatest benefit is getting people in our building and letting them know that we're here. Yeah, and then looking at the plan as it's written, as far as there, there are, fees that were outlined. So fees for uh, for for a church member for the gathering room, kitchen, sanctuary, event pavilion, it's NA. So I guess that means it's free. So if it's if it's a church member, so if Carol sponsors the group, she's a church member, it, it reading the current plan, it looks like it no nothing is charged. If it was a non- church member group, then the gathering room to use the space would be $100, the kitchen $25. This is for four hours. Sanctuary $500, the event pavilion 150. Okay, so just the plan, the way it's kind of been, the way it was written and improved before it was if it's a church member. So I guess if a church member is part of that group, it would be considered church member. Yeah. I am um, part of the Post War Artist League, and we meet at Vinland Lutheran Church every Wednesday for three hours 
and pay fifty dollars a month um, to them. So, you know, that's an example of a. And we're a five hundred one c three and have uh, insurance, so it. Okay. Yeah. Is that something that you, as a member, pay dues to be a part of? Uh, what'd you say, Penny? Is that something that you, as a member, pay dues to oh, be yeah. a part of? Yeah. Okay, so that could offset some of the cost of using the room. Um, I would guess that Project Linus and the quilting group do not do that. And I have been a part of Project Linus, so I know what that is. Um, my first inclination as Loretta was talking was these groups are performing charitable works in, in that they are giving the products that they produce to people who need them. Um, and I, uh, my thought was, oh, let's not charge them. But I do see what you're saying. And I think whatever we decide, we've got to be consistent as we go forth. You know, we've got to either charge or not charge. And the plan that as it's currently written just says that the building coordinator decides on a case by case ba basis what the fees are. So it doesn't, again, but it doesn't define who is the building coordinator. And then it's up to whoever has that role, they decide on a case by case basis, do we charge or not? I mean, to some extent, doesn't it also matter what's going on? So me as a member, if I decide I want the pavilion for just a get together, yes, I'm a member, but that's not necessarily ministry. That's not mm -hmm. charity. Right. And so my thought is in that situation, I should pay. And maybe the answer it's it's like Bill said, maybe it's, you have to also look at what, it's not always a cash price. So, I mean, perhaps, you know, like with the quilting group, I've done a couple quilting groups myself and, you know, there's different ways to um, approach it, but, you know, you've got, you know, maybe if it is a pay, is there a discount if it is a charity thing, you know, or is it, you know, if it's charity, it's fine. Cause there's, and you know, I'll tell you 25 bucks is nothing for the space in the church. It's nothing for compared to how much wear and tear that's causing them. And, and, and as Jesse said, it's nothing compared to the wear and tear that is caused by yeah. having groups in that church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at just a couple people spending 25 bucks and we can afford to wax the floors, mm -hmm. <laughs> which it's very much in need of. So are you so, paying $25 for a sort of a base fee? Well, I mean, I think we should definitely have something, but the something could also be, hey, if you're doing a charity work, um, you know, something like the quilting group, you know, sure, 25 bucks, that's that's a doable space. You're not gonna get that anywhere else, really. Um, but on the same token, if it's not charitable, I don't wanna say jack the price up a little, but if it's not, if it's just getting people in the building and it's not charity or ministry based, um, we could we could easily get more. I mean, well, and the, the, the pavilion is, and and for that, it's already been like in the plan. It, it like if it's just if somebody wants the space for an event, it's been kind of outlined what what the charges would be. And they're kind of hefty, so if they're not not church member, um, so without, yeah, so non church member, yeah. So, well, weddings, for example, weddings are expensive items anyway. So, yeah. by all means, let people pay for their weddings. That's what parents are for. <laughs> yeah, you're just expect, a, you expect to pay that for their wedding. Um, when you're just out of curiosity, does um, everybody know what Project Linus is? Yes, but you want to give them a charity waiver. No. All right, you're done. You're done. No, is it possible? Um, is it possibly when you use a church, uh, anything that has to do 
if a member is using it for a charitable cause, they can make a donation. And for those that want to use the church who are a member and it's not a charitable cause, then there is a fee that they should pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the what's happening is really kind of key here is just because somebody member doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is for charity or ministry. Um, but there's also to some extent, uh, um, Loretta pointed out a couple things. If we do it as it needs to be approved by X many BC members or whatever, um, what's the timeline for that? What if somebody has a cancellation that they would normally have an AA meeting at St. Bades and that doesn't work out and they need a new location like ASAP? Um, do, so when we're thinking about this, we probably need some kind of contingency on, hey, there's a cancellation. Do we have a, you know, a key person who knows all this stuff that we can expedite certain requests if needed? And then and of course, I'm military, Jesse's military. We are of the opinion that it is easier to make people feel better about a fee by granting a charity waiver um, that takes gets rid of a huge fee than to say, oh, we've been doing this for free. Now we need you to pay. <laughs> right, or they could, use, but, or they could um, pay back to you know, like community service. If St. Anthony hosts right. something on the property, hey, you know, you use the hall or use the pavilion. Uh, we would wondering if you go could weed help some, out. Go an hour just some or weeds two. in the garden. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Back home in Hawaii, um, they actually had the the bishop um, make the final call on the use of our parish hall. And there was a flat fee of using the parish hall. Uh, but if it's for charity, it's a donation accepted. Other than that, if there's a flat fee per hour. I'm not sure what the fees are now, but um, that's how we did it back in Hawaii. So, And I think if anything has to do with the church, um, if people want to use a church, they should go directly through the church. If someone reaches out to any of the outreach team member, then we can advise them to call the church. But anything that has to do with the church should be directed to the church. Yeah, the secretary and, and really wants to schedule things. Right. I mean, is there a building coordinator? Not right now. Okay. So uh, if Linda could take on that responsibility, then that would be great. If not, I'm I'm willing to help out. Okay. Can I? Uh, do you guys mind if Jesse interjects something? He's listening and he's biting at the bit because he actually, while he was in the Navy, he ran facilities for five thousand people. Sure. Yes. So he has Any kind of that. some thoughts on this, and he's biting at the bit. Yeah, and <laughs> I thought about volunteering for the BC position for this, but I just we got one in the family knows enough as it was, so <laughs> it's still on my mind. Uh, so hi, I think most y'all know me. Um, so what it really is, is it's, it's not really chart. It, I agree with uh, Bill. I don't want, it shouldn't really be a cash cow, but we have to protect our investment into some uh, some aspect. We still have to promote the, the betterment of it. Um, if we just have, if we just had a flat $25 fee, is that enough for somebody to come in, uh, one, say one person to come in and clean after them? I mean, I'm sure they're going to clean up, but get everything back to the standard that we want it to be to have a service. I mean, I mean, if you spend two, an hour and a half, one person an hour and a half, you already passed the minimum wage for that, for the state. And so I, I think you're better off having a little higher fee, and then everything will go through the BC committee, um, especially for those long-term ones. And then you guys can decide, you know what, we're going to wave this fee down for whatever favor you're going to do for us, where it's pull weeds, or you're doing a great charity, so we'll pull it down that way. But I think you need to, to come, I hate saying come strong on this, but you need to come strong on this because this church is your is a huge investment. That, I mean, I, I say it's ours too, but you guys were there doing this long before Julie and I came around. And this is kind of <clears throat> protecting that investment for everybody. Um, and, and for a facility, facility standpoint, um, 
wear and tear happens real quick. And then before you know it, you're not just dealing with a $1,100 stormwater collection, something, something fee. You're dealing with a, a $5,000 oops um, that just weren't expecting. And we're doing a lot of remodeling. And I got to tell you, <laughs> yeah, that's... I got to tell you, the prices of wood, the prices of sustainable wood, the price, they're, they're going, double. they're double. It's, it's double, double in the past year. Yeah. So yeah. you end up, yeah. somebody, ha if, if we don't upkeep things like waxing the floor, replacing that is insane. Um, and so it's also to prevent some headache on Jim's part later down the line. Um, when he's going, well, crap, where are we going to find the money to fix this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. Okay. We need to wrap this discussion up. Um, what do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Bill? Oh, I, I, I would recommend that. that I, I just would recommend that there be a couple of BC members. It, it could be Bishop's Warden, but it doesn't have to It'd be just a couple of people on the BC who are willing to address the issues that are weren't clarified okay. in the current plan. So to yeah. revise the current plan to address those issues so it's more clear in terms of how we want to uh, decide on, on requests. Okay, who would like to take that on? <laughs> well, she's already mentioned me, so I'll have to uh, head this up. But Loretta, if you'll work with me, and anybody else who wants to work with this. Peter, I'll help you. I mean, I, I, I can help you with um, jotting some ideas. I mean, and then we can present it to the board. And if they are okay with it, then we can approve and move forward. All right. I'll tell you something else too, Peter. I'm willing to help because I was a part of, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the one, one of the weddings that we had at the church. And I know some of the problems that we experienced. Mm -hmm. And I'd be willing to to help too. Great, thanks. Okay. And okay. and the, and the the request is whoever is involved in. And I prefer not to be involved with this, honestly. Um, somehow my life has gotten really busy. But but um, but I I, I will forward you know the notes that, that my proposal that I came up with. Yeah. Um, so part of my recommendation is to just update. Clear, to revise the current plan because it's really good. Lots of it's really good. It just needs to be sussed out. Um, okay. 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 So forward those to me. I sure will. And then um, Dee and, need to. and Penny, uh, the three of us, and oh, Dave, you're getting in there too. Uh, we can meet. <laughs> and um, if, you're, if you're all willing, we can actually break into the building. Oh, I meet in person. With a mask. Don't, don't <laughs> tell okay, good. So we have- well, uh, I'll get a hold of you and we'll take care of that. We have Peter, okay. e, Penny, and Dave who will work on this. Thank you very much. And in the meantime, regarding these two requests from Carol now. So um, I could let her know that just a response or, is pending pending further revision of our current facility use plan. Loretta, do they have a timeline in which they'd like to be part of the building, use the building? Uh, that's a good question, Peter. Um, no, just, I think they just, whenever we say yes. So I, I did not receive a specific time request. Yeah. All right, well, and they don't, I mean, we're not open yet. So uh, if we do open on May 9th, which we're shooting for, then um, after that, we'll clarify when they want to come in. Okay, okay, so I should be able to get back to her by next month. I'll let her know by next month that we'll be able to give her an answer. And we can make a decision on that at the next BC meeting. Okay, sounds good. Which if we're open, we may be in the building. That's true. Okay, good. Thank you. Next item is... Uh, uh, Esther, you had some questions or some polling you wanted to do? You know, um, Julie and I met this morning talking about faith formation. She's interested in working with the kids. I'm interested in the adult faith formation. <clears throat> but 
neither of us has been at this parish for a very long, you know, for years and years and years and years. And what I would like to hear just very quickly uh, from this group as a way of starting it is, what do you consider to be part of faith formation? Well, I, I consider godly play and the Vicar's Bible study to be probably our two major um, traditional uh, faith formation activities. I think the Wednesday evening programs, just the variety mm -hmm. of programs, that's been, I regard that as faith formation, just kind oh. of <laughs> elaborating on what, what I believe. That's true, yes, that one also, yeah. And a well, few years back there was a request for bible study at a period of time when people who work during the day would be able to attend that bible study whether it would be an evening bible study or a saturday or whenever but uh there are folks in our parish who cannot attend on thursday at noon yeah, and I would be very interested in seeing something along those lines, too, with Bible study. I donated a bunch of uh, books to, uh, to the church that cover every book in the Bible. And um, so, you know, if anybody's interested in in-depth kinds of things, that's another thing that's available. What about liturgy? How do, how do you see liturgy as part of faith formation? Hmm. What were you thinking of? Well, evening prayer, for example, or um, morning prayer, um, or even studying about those uh, those things, uh, taking a, having a class about liturgy. Yeah, um, we have had you know Episcopal one on one classes in the past that were um, really good. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, you know, uh, three or four sessions, uh, especially for new people. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, that it would be good to get as many of us as lay people involved so that you don't wind up doing the whole thing, Bill, because if the entire weight of faith formation rests on the rector, we need to get some more action going in the parish, I think. That's yeah. just... I think the contemplative prayer group has been, I, I regard that as part of faith formation. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we talked about, Julie and I talked about polling the congregation. I thought, well, why not poll the BC? So thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're considering setting up some Zoom meetings for one for youth, one for young adults or singles, because let's face it, a single life is very different than a married life. Um, and the mature or married group and actually saying what is missing. Like what's going well, what's missing, because we don't know somebody wants something unless we ask. Right. Um, but it's also, it's like Esther and I said, it can't all come from you, Bill. It's right. great that it is coming from you because it shows how important it is. But um, I was... Yeah, I was military and, you know, you, you, you'd have the priests go off to new duty station and the new priests come in and half the programs just go. Yeah. Yep. Not that you're leaving us anytime, Bill, but <laughs> we want longevity and you will not live to 150. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right. All right thank you. That answers my question. So. Well, we did have other youth things that we brought in. Uh, in the past, we've had a vacation Bible school. Uh, we've had pageants in which there's been training for the kids to put on their shows at Easter and um, at Christmas. And do those fit into what you're looking to find? For me, definitely. Um, I am hoping that there's enough interest that I can do what I did before, which was also take them on outdoor excursions to where you do scripture and a hike or scripture and camping or, you know, see what types of, um, I mean, we have them for the adults. Why not do them for the kids to where they can actually go to a convention mm -hmm. or something to where they can do that. Um, Chelsea's probably, she's one of our few young adults and there's well, young adults. We options. have had 
many wow. things in our church including like i we don't really have anyone of age right now i don't think that would volunteer um to be the youth rep um we have some that are of age but uh, i've talked to them and they don't want to take on the responsibility um which is unfortunate uh but they uh we always had a youth rep all like i guess carlton was the last youth rep um but you know we did a lot of things and my parents were super involved uh the foley's were super involved um with and the we had some other families that used to have kids in our church the scalps they were really involved in like doing things like we went to seattle we went to the science center um we went to movies uh they were usually christian-based movies um and a lot of the adults would end up joining us even if they didn't have any kids in the youth and stuff like that so we have done a lot of things like that so i mean i guess you could add that kind of stuff in we also have um in the church we have as a whole we have uh our um the high schools well i guess they have the middle school students and the high school students go to their camp during the summer and stuff so we always have that kind of information too uh charles would be the number one person to talk to about that stuff but yeah and we had acolytes um that's kind of faith formation in a way absolutely. yeah yeah so uh on the, the term of acolytes um we don't have them <laughs> we need acolytes desperately and yeah. i've been talking to linda and her and i are going to work out an email to send out to the whole congregation pleading basically adults to become acolytes so if any of you want to become acolytes it's not hard <laughs> Um, you just have to show up and um, what I tell everybody that's an acolyte I've been doing it since I was in first grade um, so a lot of my life um, what I tell everybody is the people that have acolyted know the challenges the people that have never acolyted they don't know what's going on <laughs> they don't know they're just like they're just watching you they, they, they think you know what's going on so they're just watching you uh, but I'm down, I am in charge of acolytes and scheduling, and I am down, not including myself, I am down to three acolytes. So <laughs> I so went from your, having 10 to three. So <laughs> this is your cross to bear, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm starting a new job soon where I will be working weekends too. So it just, it's making my schedule a little difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do need acolytes desperate we're desperate we've always been desperate for athletes but we're more desperate than ever <laughs> yeah losing the carlson's was a, a blow and, um, and ina and kate both kind of aged out of it so and the wentworths don't want to accolade anymore okay. so i'm down to uh chris she's accolading still and then um laurel's gonna still accolade and i'm getting luke on this year so yay <laughs> and then <Good>. me <laughs> so <laughs> that's all your accolades good 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 start <laughs> yep jessica's a little young yet a little bit yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but adults we welcome adults because charles and i both have been acolyting in the church for a long time as adults uh i'm 26 so i've been acolyting as an adult for a while now and i, I like it but um i don't necessarily want to do it every single sunday <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well you can put me on the list i used to awesome at, and back home in, in Hawaii. So, and also yeah. um, for the faith formation, what I could, what I'd like to input is um, we used to have, um, you know, the young and the old combine, the old will be the godparent of the youth oh. and we do things together, whether it's go to the library and pick up a book or have a picnic right after service uh, or brunch or just something so like once a month they would meet up as a godparent to the youth so that's, yeah. something. that's a wonderful idea especially yeah. since it helps uh, oh, nice. an intergenerational um, activity right. yeah, yeah that. that would be that'd be great i like that idea a lot cool. bring back the spaghetti feed yeah yes, spaghetti dinner. <laughs> well, i'll thanks. cook thanks for uh, i make a mean marinara kids. Kids right. <laughs> we, we used to do the youth would uh youth would cook and serve everybody and it was a great great fun was. yeah and a good yeah. fundraiser right yeah okay um 
that sounds like a good discussion. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks a lot. Okay, our next item on the discussion is uh, something that I didn't really put on there because I didn't know how to tell you. Um, Julie was saying something about uh, how long the priests will be around. You know, I'm going to turn 68 this September 29th, and um, that's going to be uh, my retirement date. So um, I'm announcing it to the parish uh, now. Okay. Which means we're going to work now, kids. We're going to work. <laughs> we get to go through the whole process of hiring on a new priest. Right. Got it. I'm uh, pretty sad because uh, I've loved this job and I've loved all the people of St. Anthony's and I don't really want to stop doing it, but I think it's time. Um, I've been here 13 years and uh, it's time for you know, new blood and new, new leadership and a younger person. So um, I think that God is calling me to step down and do something else. So um, I've, I've giving six months so that we can start making the transition to a new person. And um, I talked to the bishop and I talked to the can of the ordinary uh, about the next steps. And uh, Peter and I have been talking about this, so we'll have a, a little jump start on it here. I know that people are going to be um, sad, and um, it'll take a little while for this to sort of set in with the congregation. I'll send an email tomorrow to the whole parish, and I'll talk about it on Sunday. Um, And I will get a hold of the diocese and uh, talk with Arian, who is the canon for the ordinary, and uh, we'll start the process. And I feel tears forming. Me too, Penny. <laughs> me yeah. three. Well, I'm sad for me, but glad for you, Bill. <laughs> Thank and you, I, I, I don't know if it's time for a younger person. I just. It sounds like it's it, you discern for yourself. It's it's the right move for yourself, and and that's good. Um, but I'm sorry to see you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's not an easy decision. Um, you know, you like to think that you just keep doing something forever. But time goes by. Yeah. yeah, it does. And then when you're sitting as the bishop warden for the second time at the retirement of a priest, you just wonder, what does God want with me? <laughs> I just simply say, okay, I'll do it. Are you saying you're a jinx? <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not the jinx. Right. I just, I just may be jinxed. No, I, I say all the time, it says, you know, I'm gonna be 72 in May and I think, how come I have all this good health? And I say, God, what do you want of me? And I keep getting the same message. You'll know. <laughs> so one more task to do. And I don't know whether we're going to, after I talk to the diocese, we'll, we'll determine whether we're going to go through the entire search process as we did before when we found Bill. Um, it may be a different system, maybe a, that the bishop will offer to us a list of people that are um, viable for what we want to do. Uh, but I'll have to talk with the diocese first. Okay, let me um, let me draw. Um, well, first of all, let me say that the diocese has a document on their website. Uh, it's a transition handbook, and you can go on the diocese and website and do a search for transitions, and you'll find it. The whole thing. It's about thirty some pages long, so it's available to everybody. And it um, it was written by Ariane, who is the canon to the ordinary. And she's the one who's in charge of this whole process of uh, uh, finding clergy when someone leaves. Um, so let me take you through um, some of the notes that I made when I went through that. Okay. Um, So I'll announce this uh, to the congregation by email tomorrow. So everybody 
we'll get it uh, at the same time and I'll send out a letter by snail mail um, next week so that everybody will have it for sure. Um, my last day will be September 30th. Uh, I'll talk about it on Sunday and Peter will um, say a few words too. Um, so Arian Davison is the name of the Canon of the Ordinary and uh, she has an online calendar. She was, I was talking to her today. She has an online calendar for daytime meetings where anyone can schedule themselves on her calendar. And uh, it'd be a good idea if Peter and anyone else, she said it would be fine to have a meeting with the whole BC if you'd like to ask her questions. Uh, according to the book, uh, the BC will appoint a search committee, parish profile will be written, and uh, we don't have to go through the, the old process. You know, the old, in the old days, what would happen is you'd get an interim priest, an interim clergy for a year or so. You would write up a profile, you would ask for priest names, and you would go through them, uh, filter them out, and come up with a few that you would interview and then um, do a call. But um, they're trying to speed that up because, you know, when you have, when the priest leaves, the energy in the parish um, starts to go downhill. And so I think personally, it's a lot better if you can shorten the period between priests. And what the bishop is doing now is if, if you would like, he will offer three names, uh, three clergy, and then you can interview them and go through them and um, choose one of them. Um, you don't have to choose any of the three, but it, it shortens that whole period of search rather than uh, trying to wait for resumes to come in and uh, all that sort of thing. Um, so that's an alternative that we can do. Then the search committee narrows it down, gives one name to the BC, which approves or disapproves. Mm -hmm. Now what they're doing now um, in many churches is what's called a priest in charge model. This this is kind of new. And when the new priest comes in, you have a two-year agreement with them. Uh, the first six months is kind of a, you know, orientation and get to know you. And then you write up the letter of agreement, which uh, sets all the terms. And then at 18 months, you take six months to discern if this is really going to be permanent or not. And maybe the priest or the the parish will decide it's, it's not a good fit. If it is a good fit, then they can go on to call that priest uh, as a permanent uh, vicar. So that's kind of how the process works uh, in the diocese now. Uh, when there's no vicar, the, the wardens are in charge, the bishop's warden and the uh, people's warden. Uh, I would hope that we could get a priest fairly soon, but almost surely there will be an interim priest needed um, for some time after October 1st. And one more thing that the diocese uh, wants to have is a letter of separation for me, which outlines, you know, like the last day and uh, transfer of property and keys and, and that sort of thing, just so it's all clear. So um, that's kind of what's ahead of us. Any questions? So are you going to be available to come and fill in gaps at some point in the future? Well, you know, I wrote or I signed a letter of agreement when I when I came 13 years ago. <laughs> and one of the things it said was that I would stay away from the parish for a year. Um, so uh -huh. for that one year, I can't I can't uh, be I can't do weddings, Eucharist, funerals, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And you attend St. A's? No. Remember when uh, Dick Scott no. retired, we went through I the do. same process. No. And I he do. stayed away from the church for an entire year. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think he was interim somewhere else, if I remember correctly. But um, he was gone for a year. And then, of course, he came back and has been a faithful part of our parish, he and Maggie, um, since then. Yeah. So, and, you know, that's what I would like, too. I'd like to be able to re-enter at the appropriate time. You know, the, the, the purpose behind all that is for the parish 
to bond with a new priest. Uh, you yeah. can't do it when the old priest is still you know, messing around in the corners and no. uh, making comments and grumping around and stuff. <laughs> Micromanaging. Micromanaging. <laughs> well, that's not the way I would have done it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you can't have and and people going to the old priest and you know and saying things and it's just better to have the old priest out of the way so that the new priest can establish the um, connections and the relationships and the authority that they need. Maybe you need to say farmer priest. Old priest sounds like you're going to be older than 68. <laughs> <laughs> the former priest. Thank you. <laughs> and when you do come back, Bill will uh, welcome you with open arms. Thank you, Chelsea. Hey. I yep. just started um, attending this church <clears throat> and um, I just had to, I have to add this pitch. Any way you could stay in just for one year, one more year. I'm just yeah. starting to know this congregation <laughs> and I'm just on the BC now. <laughs> Thank you, Dee. <laughs> because the reason why uh, St. Anthony was our chosen was I felt that connection with you. And now I hopefully I can get another connection, but I understand that you have to do what you have to do. And um, Sorry, not to be emotional, but I appreciate your your time and your help. Thank you, Dee. You know, that's yeah. what you're saying is very true, that uh, especially in a smaller congregation, uh, new people bond with the priest first. Um, that's the one thing that they, um, they look at as to whether they're going to join or not. And if it's not a good fit, they move on. And if it is a good fit, they stay. So that's really... Um, a critical thing in a parish, in a small parish. And it's not especially difficult this year because of COVID and the fact that we've been meeting on Zoom instead of actually meeting face to face. So it makes it harder for newer people to feel connected. And, and I, I certainly hear you, Dee. I haven't been in the parish very long myself. And like you, I was drawn to Bill. Um, that's the reason I'm here. Um, but this is, you know, the, it's, it's God's church and we do the way we do things that God wants. So like okay. it or not. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things that comes up when uh, a priest leaves that you realize that the, the church is not the priest. Um, the church is more right. than that person and more than that personality and uh, everyone steps up. Mm -hmm. And having been the chair of the search committee, that found Bill, um, this parish worked for an entire year. We had 12 members on the search committee and they dedicated a, a weekly meeting for 12 months. And uh, we went through the entire process as Bill had lined it out before, uh, in which we had, I think it was 27 names that were given to us. And we weaned it down to seven or eight and then um, interviewed those seven or eight until we got three. And then uh, we went out, or three or four, we went out and went to their parishes and met with them, uh, went to church, listened to them preach, and then we invited two to come in. And Bill was one of the ones we invited to come in and, and meet with us in the parish. And then um, the BC made it, we made a recommendation to the BC and the BC accepted it. And then he said, I'm coming then. And we got him and it's been 13 years. And um, we have done, very well. We've done remarkably. And Dee, I do understand what you're talking about. My father was a priest. And so anytime I moved, I took my priest with me. Yeah. Mostly because, you know, it's the way it is when you're a kid. But um, we will get through this and we'll do well. Um, we've transitioned through the pandemic and now we have our own personal pandemic to go through. And um, we will make it. We will make it through. Yeah, this is part of parish life that um, you will have a succession of priests. And, you know, Dick Scott was here for 13 or 14 years. I've been here for 13. So this parish has had a very uh, stable uh, clergy, which has been a, a blessing. It's better than having but that's, a series of three or four year priests. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's it's important to not gloss over the sadness. Yeah, because um, I'm it's just also, Father Bill looks like the priest that baptized my kids. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> and 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 Bill was the one who married my daughter, and he was the one who said final prayers for Ken a few hours before he died. And Ken and I, we met Bill the first time we met you was in the parking lot. So we had been deliberating, attending an Episcopal church, and so we chose the day that we chose. I think it was the, the summer. It was the annual picnic day. So we showed up at the church parking lot and you were there and it was just you and us because there was no church <laughs> that day so we just chit chatted in the parking lot but we both felt really comfortable with you and we came back the next next week so so we were, were drawn to you and, and I mean church certainly is more than an individual person but it's the relationships that we develop with the real individual people within that church that makes a difference so that's it's sad um, so I think we need to acknowledge that. And, and I totally agree, Peter. Yeah, we, we will move on and, and things will be, all will be well again. And it's also sad. So. And do remember this, we are not replacing Bill. No. <laughs> we're, bringing in, we're bringing in another person, another person Absolutely. to continue what we do. We are the church, we are the parish, we are the congregation. And we need leadership at some point, and we will bring in the person that fits for what we need to do. And it's really not a filling in the position. Yeah. Filling the position, not a replacement. Yeah. We so, will make our best guess to pick the best person because even after a year of careful scrutiny, it just it's you make yeah. your best guess and then cross your fingers. Yeah. Yes. Something so, I think that's a little different than, than the last time we did this was um, the technology will help if yes. he's currently a, uh, has a, a parish. Um, we could Zoom watch yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. the services. Yeah. Um, we have a, put away, um, after that, uh, search, we put away the search and sabbatical fund in the DIF. So we have a little over $17,000 to help fund travel and whatnot to look at these candidates in, in person too. So I, I think in many ways, we're better prepared for the search this time around than we were when we were searching for Bill. Well, yeah, so what we have to do is, you know, well. follow their church and Yep. stock their yep. old zooms of the covid videos right <laughs> i don't think stalking a priest is a good idea but yes i know oh, it's not stalking the priest it's stalking the videos <laughs> i get what you're saying yeah um yeah and when we went through this this last time 13 well it was 14 years ago when uh dick retired um we did we did have a search committee so we will Put the word out. I will ask that our congregation volunteer for being on that search committee, and um, we'll find a leader for it. I don't want to be the leader of the search committee. I'll have enough to do as the bishop's warden and oversee it. But we will find a committee. We'll make it the appropriate size and go from there. So, Peter, your search committee. Um, do you try to get? Is it of all ages, or is it just whoever volunteers? Uh, well, we we had volunteers, and fortunately, the last time when we had our twelve volunteers, um, they came from both services. They were both young and old. They, some of them had kids, others didn't. But um, we did have a, a cross section of our uh, church. So I will look for that again. And Bill. You mentioned that we might have the option of, you know, looking at three candidates that the bishop thinks is a good fit to expedite it. How does the BC feel about that? I know I, coming from a Catholic background, you just get what you get. Yeah. They tell you who you're getting and you make the best of it. So this is an interesting dynamic for me. Yeah, that's how we did it back in Hawaii was the bishop uh, recommended three. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we had five and it was up to the BC and then they met the congregation and I think they took a vote. And um, we actually went through quite a few. Um, and uh, I think one of the reason why I left one of that church was because 
I didn't feel that connection with the, with the priest. The so um, it came from the bishop. So having a search committee might be a good idea. And um, somebody who has been involved in that in St. Anthony for a long time and know what fits for the church and for the congregation. Yeah. So we need um, all, all I take it here. three. Yeah. All yes. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to suggest that um, we set up a meeting with Arian that maybe the whole BC could uh, join in, except for me. And uh, everyone have a chance to ask your questions. And I'll take care of that. I'll get a hold of her tomorrow or early next week and um, find a date in which we can do that. Okay. I think if the whole, if the whole BC was there, then you can, um, or at least almost everybody, um, you can, everybody can feel like they are getting it from straight from the horse's mouth because she's the one that really guides this, this process. Right. And we have a pretty good cross section here, so. Yeah. I don't know if the BC itself can be the search committee or if they have to have another group that's separate or if there can be crossover. You know, there's all kinds of uh, possibilities there. And of course, yeah. I can't be involved in any of that because that's up to the BC and not, not me. And as, this is a little different in that when we started the process, Dick had, had left and we had an interim before we actually started the search process. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to be actually starting our search process while Bill is still here, but Bill is not part of that search. He will not have anything to do with it. Yeah, when I talked to Arian this morning, she made it sound like uh, the search probably won't start until after I leave. So I guess- oh, in October. Okay. Maybe I didn't have that quite right. So you'll have to ask Arian about the time. I'll clarify that with her. Yeah. yeah. I, my personal feeling is move as fast as you can. Sure. It makes uh, sense to do it now. Yeah. Uh, especially we're in a time of transition anyway. So, um, right. Yeah. Put it all together. Yeah. Father Bill, would you have recommendation for some priest you might know? Uh, anybody? You know, it's I not really, part of his process. I don't really know. Um, I don't think I'm a very good person that to, uh, I don't know that many people. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. Not to ask you. And it's, it's not advisable to have your vicar offer a um, transition to the uh, heir apparent. No. Yeah. You guys will do fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll do just fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm sad about this because as we were talking about before, you know, I've developed so many relationships with so many people. That's what I've loved about this job. I have so many friends and uh, when I leave, you know, that all gets uh, ended and um, that makes me feel sad. No, it doesn't. We can still be in contact with you. They can't tell us that we can't email you or talk to you. Well, <laughs> True. Just not in the same relationship. It, it More as friends. Yeah, <laughs> it won't be the same. Yeah, and um, you know, it's been a really good run for me. I've really enjoyed this, and it's been the joy of my heart. So to say goodbye is is hard. Yeah. And one of the things we asked him when we first They're trying to Florence with him up. was. They weren't ready for this bombshell. Are you uh, willing to build a new building? And he said yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got right on it. Well, mm -hmm. not quite right. I'm yet. glad Esther and I talked because one of the things we talked about was Bill's not going to be here forever. Yeah, he clearly said that. <laughs> um, yeah, everything changes. You know, it um, it just does. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it's God's church. God will guide us. God oh, yeah. will lead us into the next thing. There's some discernment that has to go on and uh, what what God has for St. Anthony's. And I think that's the next next step. Okay. Anybody else?
anybody have any comments? Just one. Bill saying that he's he's been doing work that he loves. And to me, that's what you should do for your job in life. And and yes, it is a job, but it's also a love of God and a love of your parishioners. And the fact that you've loved it and enjoyed it has probably done wonders for your health. <laughs> yeah, it has. You know, it's been really good for me to have a job that I love doing and that uh, I have gifts for. Uh, is a good match. What does Marie think about this? Marie's thinking that she she's trying to get out of going to bed. Oh, oh. <laughs> even though she's rubbing eyes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, all we have on the agenda, and. Um, Sorry to leave you with, the, leave you with this uh, announcement. And um, we'll go from here. Why go watch we... a funny movie or something before bed. Okay. <laughs> Good idea, Chelsea. <laughs> okay. No crying. <laughs> no crying. Okay. Only a little bit of crying. A little bit's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not going to be sleepless in Silverdale. <laughs> uh... Okay, unless there's anything else. Um, I guess the meeting is adjourned. Okay, thank you. Take care, everybody. Night. 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 Night.